Hey, Mike from Prep Pros here, and for those of you who don't already know me, I've been a full-time SAT tutor for over eight years. I've scored perfectly on the SAT myself. I've published what I think is by far the best SAT math book out there, and I'm about to release a new updated version for the digital SAT. And so far, I've started off my morning with some pretty good news from some of my students. So we're gonna run through the entire no-calc section of the October 2023 test, give you the easiest and most efficient ways that you get these questions right, if any of these tripped you up on test day. So we'll start off with number one here. The graph models the radioactive decay of sodium-24 in a sample over time. According to the graph, at five hours, which of the following is closest to the mass in the sample? Well, that just means I'm taking a straight line up from five, seeing where I'm intersecting, that's gonna be at 40. The absolute value of x plus three and absolute value equals six, so College Board wasn't behaving too well as I went through and screenshotted my student's test, but this just means we're looking at this and it's asking for what is the positive solution of the given equation. I think I've written all the other ones out so far. So here to get rid of absolute value bars, we just set it equal to the positive and the negative. So we would do x plus three equals six and x plus three equals negative six. Well, this bottom one is clearly gonna give us a negative solution. So to find the positive solution, we're just gonna have to subtract the three over and that will give us that x equals three. So b is gonna be our correct answer. All right, for number three, so y equals four minus x. What is the graph of the given equation? Well, first thing I need to see is a y-intercept of four. So I can get rid of c and d, and now it's a negative slope, so it has to be going down and to the right. So I can tell that b is correct by just eyeballing this. All right, number four, what is the solution to the given system of equations? I often prefer stacking and eliminating, but since one of these equations is already in the form of y equals, I just wanna substitute that in for y here. So we'll do 15x minus four times seven minus four x is equal to three. This will give us 15x minus 28 plus 16x. Always be super careful with your double negatives. The SAT loves to put them on there. Now from here, this would just give us 31x minus 28 equals three. Add over that 28. This will give us that 31x equals 31. So we know that x equals one. So that knocks off b and a. And now all we have to do is we have to take that one, plug it back in for x in either of these equations, but I'd use the first one. So this is just gonna tell us y equals seven minus four. And that's how I can see that c is my correct answer. All right, number five here, inequality one, y is less than or equal to two x plus three, and y is greater than or equal to 0.5x minus six. In which graph does the shaded region represent all solutions to the given system of inequality? So this is gonna be the region where both of these conditions and both of these inequalities are being met. So first thing here is I always try to find the lines. Now, as I'm looking at these graphs, I can see all of the lines are the same. So what I know is the graph of two x plus three is gonna be the steeper one I highlighted in blue. And now if it's less than or equal to it, I have to be shading below it. So I can see that A is not shading below that line. And I can also see that C is not shading below that line. So I can eliminate both of those. Now I get to move on to my next line. So our next line, the 0.5x minus six is going to be this line that we see on all of these graphs here. Now here, if we're greater than or equal to it, we have to be shading above it. So D would be shading below it so we don't want to pick D, but B, we're shading the correct region. We are above 0.5x minus six and we're below 2x plus three. That's how we can see that B is correct. All right, six. So F of T equals 0.17T plus 2.54. The given function F models the annual worldwide production of avocados in millions of metric tons T years after 2000. According to the function, by how many millions of metric tons did the annual worldwide production of avocados increase from 2010 to 2011? Well, this is gonna be our slope. And since this is just T years after 2000, every year it's gonna be increasing by the exact same amount. So every year we're just gonna be increasing by 0.17 tons. So that's why A is gonna be our correct answer here. All right, which equation has no solution? This is one of these things that I 
Predict shows up on pretty much every SAT and it's one of the easiest places you can pick up points. For no solution, in this form, we can really think about it is our slopes have to be the same and our y-intercepts have to be different. So that's why D will work because this will give us 4x plus 4 equals 4x. So graphically, if we're kind of thinking about this, we're going to have one equation of 4x. And we're going to have another one which is perfectly parallel, but it's just shifted up four units. So they're never going to have a solution here. All right, number eight, the function f is defined by f of x equals x minus one times x plus one times x plus two. Which of the following is not an x-intercept of the graph of y equals f of x? Well, my x-intercepts are gonna be opposite of the factors. So I'll have an x-intercept of one, negative one, and negative two. So I think this should be negative two comma zero, negative one comma zero, one comma zero, but two comma zero is not gonna work because we know we're only gonna get an x-intercept or essentially a solution of negative two. So that's why D would be our correct answer there. Which expression is equivalent to 16 to the one half x? Well, the one half power is just the same as the square root. So the square root of 16 is gonna give us four. So that's where we're gonna get four to the x. All right, trapezoid ABCD is similar to trapezoid PQRS. The length of each side of trapezoid PQRS is three times the length of its corresponding side of trapezoid ABCD. The area of trapezoid ABCD is six square centimeters. What is the area in square centimeters of trapezoid PQRS? So this is a scale factor question. So we know our original area is six. Our scale factor is gonna be three. Each side of PQRS is three times the length of its corresponding side of trapezoid ABCD. So once we know a scale factor for a two-dimensional shape, the multiples of the area are always the scale factor squared. So our scale factor is three, our scale factor squared is gonna equal nine. So that means our new area is gonna be nine times our original area. So we'd simply be doing nine times six, which will give us 54. Now, a really simple way, if this doesn't make sense, that you can always look back at these, is it's always the same for two-dimensional shapes. For three-dimensional shapes, it's your scale factor cubed. But let's just say we have an original rectangle with side lengths of, we'll just say this is two and this is three. Now, if the side lengths of a similar shape are all three times greater, so this would have an area of six, now it would be six and nine. Well, six times nine is 54. This is just doing exactly what we just proved. Basically, if our original area is six and it's three times greater with any two dimensional shape, our scale factor is gonna be three. The area is gonna be nine times greater. So definitely a good thing to memorize for the test. Um, doesn't show up a ton, but it's one of those advanced topics you wanna be on the lookout for. The function f is defined by f of x equals x plus one squared minus nine in the xy plane, the graph of which the following equations has no x-intercepts. So here we're dealing with vertex form. So what I know is my vertex is at the point negative one comma negative nine. And currently this is an upwards facing parabola. So since this is facing upwards, really if we think about this like essentially graphically, this is a pretty tricky question here. So let's say we have it negative one comma negative nine. So we're gonna have a parabola and it's gonna look something like this. So currently we're gonna have two x-intercepts. Now, since this is an upwards facing parabola and this would be shifting it left and right as we're going through, um, and this is gonna be shifting it up and down, we're not gonna care about moving left and right like we would be with our first two because if we're moving left or moving right, we're still gonna have two x-intercepts but because this is an upwards facing parabola, the only way for it to not intersect the X axis is we need to shift it up. And we need to shift it since we're currently at negative one comma negative nine, we would need to shift it up more than nine units because then the vertex, the minimum, is gonna be above the X axis. And that's why F of X plus 11 is correct. We need to bring it up 11. If we bring it down 11, we're gonna be even further down here, so we're still gonna be having those same x-intercepts. So a bit of a tricky kind of conceptual graphing question, but you always wanna make sure you have vertex form down. 
All right, 12. In the xy plane, the graph of the given equation is a circle. What is the area of the circle? This shows up every single SAT completing the square. It's really free points once you have it memorized. So we'll go through these steps. So step one is typically grouping the terms and moving them over to the other side. This is already done for us. So now we'll just group them and we'll leave a little bit of space left over for us. So we have our x squared minus 10x plus our y squared minus 6y is equal to 30. Well, to complete the square, we're gonna take these terms, divide them by two and square them. So negative two divided by two is negative five. Negative five squared is 25. So we'll add 25 over there as well. Negative six over two is negative three. Negative three squared is nine. So we'll add nine. And this is the only part we care about because our standard circle equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. So if we're looking for the area of the circle, we only care about the radius. So this is all going to add up to 30, 55, 64. So that means our radius is gonna be equal to eight. We find our area is pi r squared. So our area is going to be equal to pi eight squared. So there's our 64 pi. All right. This is where the test starts to get pretty tricky always. So the fraction with numerator x squared um, plus x and denominator x plus five, end fraction, this is just, College Board was being a little weird as I was screenshotting these uh, for my student. The given expression can be rewritten as a plus 20 over x plus five, where a is a polynomial. Which of the following represents a? Well, what we're really saying then is we know that x squared plus x over x plus five is equal to a plus 20 over x plus 5. Well, and we know a is a polynomial, and what we know is if we're ever adding or subtracting fractions, we always need to create a common denominator. So what we can see is our common denominator is x plus 5. So this means I need to, I'll give myself a little space to keep this a little faster. This means I need to multiply my a by, and this is like the same as a over 1, by x plus five over x plus five. Now, when we do this, we're gonna get x squared plus x over x plus five is equal to a times x plus five over x plus five plus 20 over x plus five. Now, since all of our denominators are the same, we can cancel them out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and erase all of that. And now from here, we basically want to solve for x plus five. So I would subtract over my 20. This will give me x squared plus x minus 20 equals a times x plus five. Now this is going to factor down into x plus five and x minus four equals a times x plus five. Well, now we can cancel out our x plus fives, and that's gonna show us that a equals our x minus four. All right, number 14 here. An electric circuit contains three capacitors in a particular arrangement. The given equation relates the equivalent capacitance C of arrangement C to D, E, and F, the capacitances of individual capacitators, which equation correctly gives C in terms of D, E, and F. So this is, we're just re-expressing these. So we're trying to get this in C equals. Now, since we are dealing with fractions, we need to create common denominators. So our common denominator is gonna be D, E, and F of, on this right-hand side. So we're gonna have our same one over C, but we're gonna have this equals to one over D. Now to create that common denominator of D, E, F, I'm gonna have to multiply this by E, F over E, F plus one over E, now we're trying to get that same DEF denominator for all of these. So now we're gonna to have to multiply this one by DF over DF because that's gonna give us our same EDF. And now our final one here plus one over F. Now this one's gonna be multiplied by DE over DE. Now when we do this, we're gonna get one over C equals EF over DEF plus df over def plus de over 
DEF. Now, since we have a common denominator, we can add these. So we're going to be left with 1 over C equals EF plus DF plus DE all over DEF. And now, since we're looking for C in terms of these, we can simply take the reciprocal. Since this is 1 over C, we're going to just take the reciprocal of this. That just means we're flipping our numerator and our denominator. Just so I don't have to write this all back out again, that means the DEF is going to go on top and the DE, EF, and DF are going to go on the denominator. That's why C is our correct answer there. All right, number 15 here. The cost of renting a bicycle is $8 for the first hour plus four for each additional hour, which the following functions gives the cost C of H in dollars of renting the bicycle for H hours, where H is a positive integer. So this is always a little bit of a trap question. So hopefully all of my students or those who've gone through my advanced math course would have got this right because I have a few questions in there that are identical to this. Um, and really half the battle for these hard SAT questions is knowing what you're looking out for. So it's $8 for the first hour. That doesn't mean we're starting at eight and plus four for each additional hour. So we also saw one of these on like the April 2023 SAT. Um, very, very similar concept. But what you know is we basically have some points. For the first hour, when h equals 1, we know that the cost should be 8. So what this tells me is I just want to plug 1 in for h, and I want to see if this expression is equal to 8. Well, 8 times 1 minus 4 does not equal 8. 8 times 1 plus 12 does not equal 8. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 8 does not equal 8. But 4 times 1 plus 4 does equal 8. And then every additional hour, if I had two that would work, well, that would mean when h equals two, the cost of renting the bicycle would then be 12. And we could plug two in and we would get 12 back out again. But that's half the battle for these late questions is you just kind of need to know the trick. Same way with our prior two questions, we were just dealing with a lot of this tricky SAT fraction work. All right, so this is where the difficulty will reset. So 16, five r equals three r plus three times r plus one. So we just want to distribute this. 5r equals 3r plus three. Subtract over the 3r. This will give us that 2r equals three. That's going to give us that r equals three halves or 1.5. What is the positive solution to the given equation? Oh, so this one is tricky. So a lot of students, I actually have one of these in my advanced math course once again, um, to kind of teach this little trick. Um, a lot of students will struggle with this because They'll go ahead and square this. And if you do this, you'll end up with 9x squared minus 12x minus 12. And this is all equal to 0. And then good luck factoring this or using the quadratic equation um, unless you're really comfortable with factoring. But this is a little trick that you can use. And it's called basically u substitution. So here we're going to say that 3x is equal to just, we'll write it as u. So we can rewrite this as u squared minus 4u minus 12 is equal to zero. Well, this is way easier to factor. So this is just gonna factor down into u minus six and u plus two equals zero. And now we can pop our three x back in. So that means our factors are gonna be three x minus six and three x plus two equals zero. And we're looking for our positive solution. So this is going to give us a negative solution because we do 3x equals plus 2 equals 0 when we get 3x equals negative 2. But we'll do our 3x minus 6 equals 0. This will give us that 3x equals 6, and that will give us that x equals 2. Another one of those little tricks that just can make a huge difference once you know what you're looking for. All right, line k is shown in the xy plane. Line j not shown is perpendicular to line k. What is the slope of line j? So this just means we're looking for the negative reciprocal of this current line. Um, so here, let's see, we're going down to, we're going over five. So and I'd always want to double check this. So we have the point, not zero. This is going to be the point negative five comma zero and zero comma negative two. Yeah, so we are going to have a slope of negative two fifths currently. And I'd always be super careful if you're not comfortable with these of actually using our slope formula, the y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. 
Now, since we're looking for the negative reciprocal, we're gonna flip the fraction and flip the sign. So there we're gonna get our correct answer of five halves. All right, in the xy plane, the graph of y equals negative 14 one, times one half to the x plus k, where k is a constant, has a y-intercept of zero comma two. What is the value of k? Well, this just means we can plug in zero for x and two for y. So we'll rewrite this expression as two equals negative 14 times one half to the zero plus k. Well, anything to the zero is just one. So this is gonna give us two equals negative 14 times one plus k. So this is just gonna give us two equals negative 14 plus k. And that's gonna give us that 16 is equal to k. All right, the perimeter of a square inscribed in a circle is 30 inches. The radius of the circle, they've done this like same type of question so many times over the years. Uh, the radius of the circle is x root two inches. What is the value of x? Now, anytime you see these questions and you see root two, root three, it's probably a special right triangle question. So I'm gonna try to draw this out as well as I can. This is definitely not gonna be perfectly to scale, but hopefully for any of you who this kind of tripped up initially, this will make a lot more sense now. So um, now if we have a perimeter of the square inscribed in the circle is 30 inches, that means each of its side lengths would be 30 over four, which is gonna give us 7.5. So all of these are gonna be 7.5. And now we're told the radius of the circle is x root two inches. Well, since we're gonna get a square, we go all the way across the square, we're gonna create a 45, 45, 90 triangle because we've broken up these 90s perfectly in half. I'm struggling to draw that last one. So that's gonna tell me that this is gonna be 7.5 root two. Now the part you have to be careful with is it's asking for the radius. So that would give us our diameter. So the radius is gonna be half of that. So it's gonna be 3.75, which should also be the same as 15 over four. So either of those should give you your correct answer. So I really hope this walkthrough helped you guys out. If you guys have any questions about any of the stuff that I did here or how you can better prepare yourself for November or December, drop them in the comments below. If you guys are looking for a really structured course to help you get there, check out my Ultimate SAT course, and at the bare minimum, you should check out the free trial of it.